We've got flapping action, we've got cranes, and no, I'm not talking about birds. But we might just get an armadillo later in the Starbase summary. But before I continue, there's one more animal I need to address, and yes, I'm talking about the elephant in the room. Because you might have noticed that I'm not the regular guy. Unfortunately, Das is sick for the day, so I'm filling in for this Starbase summary instead. If you don't know me, my name is Marty, and I usually do the Dutch narration. Uh, but this time, I'll take you on a tour of South Texas to see what SpaceX has been up to in the last few days. And we're starting with the Orbital Launch Pad 1, the original Orbital Launch Pad, which never saw an orbital flight. And they're still demolishing it because it's no longer suitable for the new generation of Starship and Super Heavy version 3. So, to make space, for the new upgrades, they have to get rid of a lot of concrete. You might remember the first flight dug a bit of a hole under the launch mount and they filled it up with a lot of concrete. Um, and now all that concrete is in the way, so they are breaking it up, digging it out and trying to get rid of it. And Okay, here we're seeing some venting, some very wild venting going on at one of the tank farms. And specifically it's the tank farm of Pad 2. So that is a new launch pad that they're building for the next version, version 3 of Starship and Super Heavy. So this venting, of course, is most likely intentional. They release these uh, ice cold gases time and time again, uh, perhaps to release some pressure or to clear out some lines or to cool down some lines and. Uh, the interaction of these gases with the moisture in the atmosphere creates these beautiful or funny or interesting or whatever you want to call them little clouds that we see. Um, we've also called it SpaceX's, SpaceX's own fog machine and uh, well <laughs> that's really obvious right here uh, because yeah it's really turning Starbase into Vandenberg as we like to, uh, to joke uh, really turning into a foggy place. But I'm sure they're having a purpose with this specific vent. I'm sure there's something uh, that they're doing that needs this this aggressive venting, which we usually only see on launch day. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if you usually see it this aggressive on launch day. Uh, but yeah, this is more venting than we're used to on a regular day. Uh, I know that much. Yeah, it does really look like fog. It's almost like the truck is disappearing into a cloud of fog, except this is an artificial one. Okay, enough of that, and we're going to uh, work on the new launch mount on part two, where they're a, uh, apparently installing chopstick actuators. And just uh, a few seconds ago, we also saw them working on the hold down arms, or specifically the hoods that will protect the hold down arms after liftoff. More chopstick action is going on. I see them moving right now. These are the uh, arms that will be used to catch the boosters after flight, but they will also be used to stack the boosters and starships on top of this orbital launch pad, which is looking increasingly finished, I've got to say. And uh, yeah. Especially in these close-ups, if you're looking at the right parts, it definitely is starting to look finished with uh, the paint and uh, the metal being cleaned off. But they're not really finished yet as more parts are being hoisted into the inside of the launch mount. And indeed, work on the chopsticks is continuing as well. And you can see that small platform, like that lighter colored structure uh, on the left side, and a person is working into that, which really helps give a sense of scale. Though, I've got to go off the words of my colleagues here, because I've never been to, star <laughs> to Starbase myself yet, but apparently the scale is really hard to telegraph through the screen. Um, these ships, um, boosters, and all the infrastructure they need is proper massive, and... Uh, yeah, just seeing it on the screen doesn't really do it justice. But every, every now and then we get to see like this tiny person working on a platform tucked into a massive bit of infrastructure like these chopsticks and that helps 
really helps giving a sense of scale. But from the chopsticks and from the launch complex, we move over to the air separ separation unit. We just saw the uh, massive amounts of venting. Well, usually that is a very cold gas like nitrogen or oxygen, uh, specifically liquid nitrogen or oxygen, and uh, SpaceX plans to make that stuff themselves by extracting it from the air, and that is what that air separation unit is for. In the meantime, we're seeing an electronics bunker come in, and it's now staged uh, near Star Hopper, near Hoppy, if you will, um, for probably for installation at the uh, launch site. But from the launch site, we move over to the other side of Starbase, to the Massey's test location, to the Massey's test site, where, we, where we're seeing uh, test tanks booster B18.1 and 18.3, and also ship 39.1. So these are test tanks for various parts of the Starship Super Heavy launch system. And... Um, uh, yeah, as the, the name implies, they will be used to test things before putting them onto the real vehicle. And speaking about tests, one of the tests they do at Massey's is a static fire, and apparently they're installing a structure for that. Uh, last time we already saw these trusses coming up, and uh, it looks like, at least from the labels I'm seeing in the video, it looks like uh, we now know or we now assume that these structures will be support structures to support the rockets during static fire. Um, I don't know why they suddenly need this, these structures. They didn't have them at first. Uh, they didn't really use them. So this is the very first time we're seeing it going up. But I'm very sure that once this is all completed and once we see static fire action at Massey's again, um, we'll see what they're planning to use this for and why they need it now. Uh, but yeah, they're really working on it. Uh, we're seeing them now installing some cross braces to complete the structure. And another thing that's complete is apparently uh, the test campaign of ship 39.1, which is one of the test tanks I was talking about earlier. So we know its, it's test campaign is complete now because it's moving back from Massey's to the production location. Uh, so it's taking a trip over the road, uh, guarded by uh, police and security vehicles, and there you can see it go behind the mega base, going into the production site, or not. I mean, I can act surprised, but I already recorded the Dutch version, so I saw this already. Uh, <laughs> but one of the things we do also see at the production location is the production site is the new Giga Bay. We just saw the mega base in those night shots, and they're actually too small. SpaceX needs a much bigger building to build bigger rockets, and also to build more rockets. So they're building this giant giga bay, uh, where they will construct the super heavy boosters and the starships from the parts that roll out of the starship factory. So the Starship factory just spews out a whole load of barrel sections and other parts and this Giga Bay will be where SpaceX will stack these and weld them together. And you can see more parts are coming in for this Giga Bay, Giga Bay as well. Um, and yeah, so we're seeing the, the Star factory in front here uh, with these massive windows. And this is the Giga Bay that's being built adjacent to it. And just on the left side of the screen is one of these Mega Bays, which is already massive, but also too small. And as we're looking at the Giga Bay, there's another arrival. These are apparently cryogenic valves, which will be used uh, to shut off some of the lines that SpaceX is using to uh, uh, yeah, move the cryogenic liquids around the tank farms or wherever, I don't know what, uh, what these will be installed in. Um, and another arrival, which is the flappy action I was referring to earlier, because this is actually an aft flap. So this is one of the flaps that goes onto the aft of the ship, and Starship will use these flaps upon re-entry to help orient itself, orientate itself in the, the right uh, position to 
be able to handle re-entry uh, at the right angle and make it through uh, these these very challenging uh, stages uh, through the fiery plasmas and survive that yeah intense stage of its flight. And there is the armadillo, specifically a nine-banded armadillo. Every now and then we get some uh, uh, some wildlife action from Starbase. Uh, we've seen all kinds of animals, and now we can add this armadillo to the list, which is probably foraging for, for food here in the grass at Starbase. And from this armadillo we go to uh, Heat Shield, Specifically the one on ship 40's nose cone. You can see uh, that some tile work is going on. Um, apparently there are small holes in the tiles at the attachment points. They are all marked. And uh, yeah, the workers are doing I don't know what. <laughs> uh, but yeah they regularly inspect these tiles after installing them on the vehicle and you can see another nose cone here uh, the one for ship 41 you can see some markings on uh, on there and those are being used by spacex engineers to uh to decide what's next what work they need to perform next and uh some more nose cones and this is uh one without tiles and also without the pins that will be used to to hold the tiles onto the nose cone. So we've got 40 uh, for the nose cone for ship 40 all the way up through ship 46. And now we move on to the ship quick disconnect arm and specifically the extension for that thing. So this will be used to, as the name suggests, quickly disconnect the lines that will be used to fill Starship. Uh, they will be disconnected at liftoff to protect them from the fiery flames that come out of the rocket's engine bay. And with that, I'm going to leave you with this beautiful sunset over the production site. Hopefully, Daz will be feeling much better next time, so he'll be back for the next episode. On that note, thank you so much for watching, and be awesome, everyone.